Hey guys, good morning. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to talk to you about uh, basic patrol formations at team level. Pretty much a team level, four to six man. This is a departure from the last couple of talks I've done where I've talked about uh, gear. And that's important because gear, as we all know, is very important and whatever level you're working at, whatever professional level, you're gonna be interested in gear because it's gonna help you achieve the mission. However, one of the problems is that many people never get beyond gear in their kind of, you know, tactical education. So you need to move beyond it. You need to actually move and learn uh, something about small unit tactics. It can't all be about gear, guys. So that being said, we'll see what it says in comments because I broke out the, uh, the toy soldiers here today. So when I previously did this talk, I uh, did it with uh, the whiteboard and my little uh, black mo uh, magnetic markers and I just hoped, and we'll see what you guys have got to say about it, we, I hope that this would be a better visual and a learning aid. Okay, so I got a little toy soldier guys. So this is not, when I give these talks, I'm not reading out of some like Ranger handbook or whatever, I'm trying to give you some pointers that I've kind of learned over the years and so I'm going to talk about a few basic formations and some, some pros and cons and just give you some tips. So part of what I'm going to talk about today is, is movement formations. So if we're going to be moving, uh, we are not expecting contact, uh, but however, we obviously have to provide the best security that we can in the formation that we're going to use. At the same time, it gets a little bit bigger than the actual, because we're playing uh, chess, not checkers, it gets beyond the simple formation we're going to use because it gets into route selection, etc. So you're going to have movement formations which are going to be trying to use, make the best use of the ground without at the same time being sucked into, uh, you know, danger areas where you may be uh, more prone to being ambushed, etc. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about formations where we're expecting enemy contact because we're, for example, advancing to contact or we are moving on to an objective, etc. And then that's going to be slightly different and slightly different considerations. One thing I will say is that, is that there is a distinct difference between when we're in contact and when we're out of contact. That may seem like an obvious statement, but a lot of people in training will, will miss that. So you have to be able to execute formations and formation changes and impress your will, if you're the team leader, onto the team silently when out of contact. So that's going to be primarily use of hand signals. Yes, you can have like whisper radios and all that kind of stuff, but you generally want to stay off the air. So um, hand signals. Things have got to be executed silently and people have got to look in and understand that what the hand signals are and, and, and what your intent is. The flip side to that is that once it goes noisy, there's no point trying to not be noisy and at that point uh, you know you you can be vocal when you get a little bit further on that however sometimes depending on the general noise that's going on or distances etc you won't necessarily be hear that that vocal so again hand signals may come back into play so and then maybe even radios, etc. Okay, so there's a few things to consider, but you've got to be able to execute these things silently and you've got to be able to execute them noisy. So what I've got here now is I've got four guys, right? This is a basic four man, say, reconnaissance patrol, and they're going that way, okay? Um, so they are in what we call single file. So we've got point man, two, three, four. Now, when we're moving in a formation like this, we're going to have something like sectors of fire allocated to the front guy is going to have to the front, the rear guy's next guy is going to have maybe like to the right or the left, and then they're going to alternate. So if he's right, he's left. The rear guy is going to face, he's not going to face rear, he's going to be responsible for the rear without walking backwards, okay? And when he halts, he's going to face the rear. What you need to have here is you need to have an interval. So the interval between individuals is going to be something like five to 10 yards. It can be even further, you know, 20 yards or whatever, if you're in more open country. Now, what's good about the single file formation is that it provides good control. So if we're like wending our way on this patrol through, you know, uh, bits of cover and up, up, up sort of like hedgerows and through woods, etc., then, 
you, then then what you've got here is the ability to simply uh, you know follow on um, given that this is a movement formation then what it does however provide is that if we get uh, contact from camera side which would be a contact right or my side which would be a contact left it's never an ideal situation because you didn't expect this contact so now you're reacting to enemy fire but what this does do is it gives you the ability to turn to face the threat and now we're already online to engage the threat and then move into whatever battle drill we're going to move into where it's weaker is to the front so if we get contacted from the front then we've got the one guy who can return fire now this is another important thing to consider and that is that you can't you've got to stop thinking of things in static terms as soon as uh, we get contact from the front for example the point guy is going to be conducting his RTR drill he's going to be shooting and moving to cover if you're the second guy the third guy the fourth guy and you think you can take that shot then there's a very large danger that you're going to put a round into the back of one of your guys heads okay so avoid fratricide so in this case the only guy that can return fire is the point guy until other people have moved so for example he might have to move out this way so that he can get enough he doesn't have to get exactly online but he can get an angle and so we've got maybe th these are our front two guys who we may have designated as alpha we may have designated the rear two guys as bravo so alpha and bravo and without getting too deeply into break contact drills maybe alpha's got up online now and then bravo has got the ability to figure out where they're going to fill in to get up online are they going to come this side or are they going to come up this side but the bottom line i'm trying to tell you here is that they've got to move because you can't all return fire from a single file formation okay that's great now what i like to do is um go between single file formation and a file or what we can call a column formation this is good if the terrain you're moving through changes like for example we could be in thick woods and we could be in single file and then we might be in woods like i'm in right now and it might be more appropriate to be in a file or column formation and what this does is very simply allows you exercising control and simplicity on the, the patrol movement it allows you to move out between these formations so if i was to move into a file formation i'm simply going to move alternately guys out now and they can be kind of closer together in, in, in a file or column or they can spread out a little bit and that kind of depends on the on the terrain and the ground that you're in this formation obviously spreads the team out a little bit more and is better for when things are more open in terms of advantages and disadvantages it's still got good control and if you get that contact from the right or the left if, if for example the contact comes from camera side then these guys can step into the gap and then we've got that online formation again so from the left or the right it's pretty strong in terms of reacting to unexpected enemy contact if you get contacted from the front and this would depend on the tightness of the angle if we were patrolling like this then the second guy he's got nothing he's still got to move if we were further out it may be possible depending on the angle of the enemy uh, contact that he may be able to move or he may be able to only move a short distance before we've already got two guys who are up on line addressing the contact at the front thus allowing bravo the bravo team to again decide where they're going to move to so it's not hugely different from single file single file and file it's just a case of spreading out laterally a little bit what i'll do now is i'm just going to show you a couple of pictures from above of uh these formations so you can get a better sort of view of them this is team moving in single file team moving in file or column okay so if we start to move from general movement techniques or mo uh, patrol movement techniques and we start to get into a situation where we're expecting enemy contact a a useful kind of or, or a pretty popular sort of u.s military formation is the wedge so what we've got with the wedge is we've got a point guy and a guy that's back left and a guy that's back right this is now done so it's moving towards the camera 
And then what you would do, and the guy might be a saw gunner or something, is you might put him out on the side that you expected the greatest threat to come from. That's great. Now, the wedge formation, so now we're more interested in, we're advancing to contact and, uh, you know, we expect stuff to happen imminently. Um, it's harder to control. So these formations become harder con to control once we move from a single file formation to a column and then we start to spread out. What I do like is I do like this formation, which is the modified wedge. And the modified wedge is basically a diamond formation. And this is easier to control. And then it gives you the ability to deploy this guy out to whichever side the contact comes from. It's also pretty good if you've got no idea where the enemy contact is going to come from. Because you've got this uh, sort of all-round defense, all-round security moving formation. What I want to do, however, is I want to get into a little bit of opinion here and I want to show you something. So, facing the camera now, so here's my single file formation. We talked about the single file and we talked about the advantages and disadvantages of that. So, if I then move my guys into a um, file or column formation, so now we're moving and you can see how we may have come into closer country and we came back into single file and then we came out again and we kind of got into um, file. Especially if you are moving across more open country and you get into this file formation where you can spread it out pretty well. Let me just show you that. So that, that, that's now, that's now modified wedge. You see what I'm trying to show you here? There's not a huge difference between the modified wedge, the diamond, and then you've kind of skewed the, um, the shape here, and now we're moving as a column, which is easy to control, and also still gives you the advantages of, let's say the contact comes from over here, boom, we're online. Let's say the contact comes from the front. We've still got the same deal, this guy, whatever, coming up here. Okay, we've still got the same idea. So I just tend to find that if you're, if you're generally moving, then moving between single file and file is useful, allows control, and also provides a good security posture in case you come under enemy fire. Now, if we're looking at a situation where we are actually advancing on an objective or we're in a more serious situation, we're advancing to contact, whatever that situation might be, then as I mentioned before, in this formation, whether we're in single file here, then what we've got is we've normally got on a movement formation, we've got Alpha 1 and 2 and Bravo 3 and 4. Same way if we were moving in column. So Alpha 1 and 2, Bravo three and four, okay? Um, if we're expecting enemy contact, then what we can do is we can modify that formation into a half attack formation. This is most often used, and this is British military stuff here. This is most often used as a full team where I've got four guys one whole fire team down one side and one whole fire team down the other side. This can be used if we're advancing to contact and the country's pretty close so we've got to go between we, we want to bring it in for more control rather than spreading it out into a skirmish line at this time we can bring it in under more control. Um, also that what this can be used is, is as a movement formation within an advance to contact when we've got another team up front a tactical bound ahead who might be in a uh, an arrowhead formation, etc., and these guys are following up behind, and they're in half attack, so they're kind of ready to go. The difference here is that the way I set it up was Alpha was completely on the left hand side, and Bravo was on the right hand side. So that what that allows there is that if we are moving and we come under contact from the front, then these two guys are already immediately able to to respond to it, and these guys are just moving up, and now we've got that online uh, formation to engage the enemy and then move into our drills from there. What you can do is if you think about it like opening the wings 
what you can do is if if you want to take a compromise between half attack what you can do is bring the guys out this is very, looks very similar to a wedge okay so now you bring the guys out and what we're in now is an arrowhead formation so we've still got these two guys moving at the front we've got these two guys moving at a 45 degree angle back and then that's less distance for them to get up, get up online like this and but it's going to be slightly harder to control because you've got that now guys spread out a little bit um, what you then get into is you get into a skirmish line online in a skirmish line so what's interesting about the skirmish line thing here is that we can if we're expecting imminent contact now we could have moved be moving in half attack we could have spread out we could have come up onto a skirmish line we might be moving through for example some some heavy forest at this time okay um, so we can move simply as the line moving forwards in a skirmish line until contact is made at which point once contact is made we're going to be doing fire and movement what we can also do is we can move by bounding overwatch so what that might look like is that bravo for example bravo is going to go firm they're also going to take a knee take a fire position and alpha is going to bound up to their next bounding overwatch position go firm there and then bravo is going to move up to join them now in bounding overwatch you get more freedom than you do under fire and movement when the actual enemy fire is coming okay so there's two ways of simply moving you can move sequentially where you come up level roughly or you can go alternate where you move beyond obviously alternate is moving further and it's probably going to be more more likely to be achieved um, during bounty overwatch so here's the thing about this so if you're the leader of this and now I'm not going to cover today uh, leadership positions or etc within this I'm going to do another talk on sort of pros and cons of where you can be as the team leader within this team um, but if I if I want to control this formation then it comes back to what I said about the, the hand signals if you want it you need to be able to get the guys into this formation you need to be able to tell them the axis that they're going to be moving on so that everyone's looking into you and you're giving them the axis and then you need to be able to by uh, hand signals actually explain to them that we're going to be moving uh, bounding overwatch for example so we've now we've come up online I've now shown everybody the axis that we're going to follow and I'm going to tell them bounding overwatch you move whatever it might be so I've got to be able to give simple hand signals so that we can then get this thing going once it goes noisy then there's, there's no requirement to you know not be noisy and so we can start yelling remember what I said if it gets really noisy then the yelling itself may go out the window uh, and so we may then have to also use hand signals but remember every man is a link man so it shouldn't just be for example if this guy was the leader trying to yell something it's got to be repeated down the line so that this guy on the end knows what's going on this guy's got to bring this guy with him otherwise in the noise and confusion people are going to get left behind people aren't going to understand what's going on what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show again some like aerial aerial shots of these things so that we can uh, hopefully give you a better picture of what I'm talking about here team moving in wedge in this case with the greater threat to the left flank modified wedge or diamond half attack at team level in this case alpha are the two left guys and bravo are the two right guys arrowhead if you want with arrowhead you can also put a single guy at the front looks exactly like a wedge Extended line or skirmish line. Whole team moving is moving forwards. The team is moving forwards in extended line by bounding overwatch. <laughs> like I said, we'll see how we'll see how this goes down on the internet with playing with the toy soldiers, breaking out the kids uh, kids play sets or whatever. So hopefully this is going to be it. Let me know and I'll I'll know whether this is going to be a good. Uh, um, uh, 
sort of visual training aid going forwards when I start, start talking about formations, etc. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Hopefully that uh, that was a decent explanation for you. Uh, let me know, you know, anything in comments. And looking forwards, the next uh, Max talk is going to be about the uh, pros and cons of different positions of the team leader within the team. Okay, guys, talk to you next time.